All right, welcome everyone to our workshop on the art and science of flow state. Um, this is a component of our week of wellness, which is a week long event that we've curated to help people uh, get on track with creating sustainable self care practices. Um, the mission of this free class series is to empower our community to gain new skills for movement, stress reduction and self care in a time of isolation and change. Our goal is to connect with our community at large and to hold space for those in need of support. Uh, we aim to share our knowledge and expertise as an act of service to Whatcom County business, individuals, and healthcare workers who may benefit from a regular self-care practice. My name is Summer Huntington. I'm the owner at Flow Shala, um, and I have put some links in the chat bar if you're interested in checking out our services. Uh, there's several links there. And my goal in this workshop, um, first I wanted to have it just be really cerebral and just really geek out on the neuroscience behind flow state and have it just be speaking only. Mm. And then, as we started curating this workshop, mm -hmm. we realized that a lot of the other offerings involved movement. So I truly, I thought about it and I, would, I th think I'd be doing a disservice to not give you some tools um, and really combine that. So today we're gonna double down and we're gonna learn about the neuroscience of flow state while we move. Sound good? Awesome. Okay, so uh, go ahead and come to a standing position and we'll start with just assessing the posture. So a lot of folks don't even realize that um, malalignments might occur in the posture. And I wanna just teach you how to assess your posture on your own so that you can take inventory. So a real easy way to assess posture is to stand against a wall. So let's imagine I had a wall behind my head. And as you're standing with your heels back against the wall, your hips against the wall and the back of your head against the wall, stand in your normal stance. And if you were to draw a straight line up starting from your ankle to your knee, to your hip bone, to your shoulder bone, and to your ear, all of those would be in a perfectly straight line if you were in a, in a neutral posture. Now, take a moment to just check out where do your hips lie relative to your feet? So you can assess, do my hips travel forward slightly ahead of the feet? And my back, generally we're, we're usually tilted forward or kind of thrusted forward, which then our spine has to adjust to that new position of the pelvis. So do yourself a favor, take one hand to the front and back of your pelvis and start to pull your pelvis back in space until it arrives directly plumb line over the midfoot. We call this midfoot balance here. And then draw your shoulders up, down and back. And notice if you tend to go into this sort of sway back position in order to open the chest. Instead, knit and corset your abdominals in. You can even palpate, like take your hands uh, to your lowest rib and your upper hip bone. See if you can cinch those up together and then start to rip the ground apart under your feet. And then uh, for your neck, think about drawing the back of your occipital ridge, so that little uh, junction right in here where it feels so good when you're getting massage. Draw that up and back. And then shoot energy actively out through your fingertips. And imagine screwing uh, two light bulbs, screwing those light bulbs into the earth and then come into what's called shoulder pack. So everyone draw your shoulders up to your ears. This is the stress response. And then actively away from your ears while screwing your imaginary light bulbs. So coming to that neutral stance, inhale, circle sweep your arms up, look up. Tilt your head back just slightly. And then on your exhale, place your hands in prayer in the front of your heart and see if you can keep your pelvis in a neutral position, tearing the ground apart under your feet. Try it again, inhale, circle, sweep, arms up. Micro bend in the knees. On your exhale, hoss onto the back of the throat, press the palms to prayer, traction the neck back. Imagine the back of the skull touching the wall to arrive at that neutral position. Two more times like that. Inhale, circle, sweep, arms up. And exhale, hands to prayer, ha. Good, and a little slower this time. Inhale, circle, sweep, arms up, look up. And exhale, nice and slow. Become aware of the energetic body on the outside of your physical body. So it's that light touch and that sort of frequency around your uh, physical vessel. And we'll start with some easy finger and wrist mobility while we chat about the neuroscience of flow state. So do as I do. A-OK, -okay, stack the fingers one at a time. You're still tearing the ground apart under your feet. Um, A-OK, -okay, and then imagine sort of grabbing an ice cream cone. So I'll be teaching you guys five easy ways to facilitate flow state. And this is number three. This is the joint mobility piece. And we'll go into the why of why that's important in just a moment. Come into your wrist flexion. 
an extension. So just follow and do as I do, still tear the ground apart into your feet. So flow state is a state of hyper-focus where action and awareness merge. Now I run a training facility called the Flow Shala. I founded a couple systems, uh, Steel Mace Vinyasa and Club All Yoga, which are two loaded asana systems, loaded yoga. I've got the mace here, which I'll demo in a bit. Wrist circles. But I really hope that you guys start to get curious about what are the things in my life, elbow circles, that I do that elicit a flow state response. So where, am I, where in my life am I currently hyper-focused where action and awareness merge into one and I'm able to tune into higher self, I'm able to achieve more with less effort and I'm completely in present and sense control over my outcomes. Press your palms forward, pack your shoulders. Those, those of you coming in, feel free to turn on your screens if you'd like, if you want me to give any movement feedback. Totally optional, totally up to you. We're just warming up our joints with a movement sequence called into flow. This is the cornerstone warm up at our studio flow shala. Next slide, forward and back. So when thinking about flow state, assess where in my life am I in a state of pure flow? If you're into active sports, such as mountain biking, downhill, especially, totally in that state of hyper-focused flow state, Next slide, side to side. If you're a skier or a snowboarder, you might be in a state of flow during that time. Maybe if you're a painter or any time in nature, generally that seems to be a place where people can turn on flow really easily. As you're doing next slides, keep your jaw lifted here. Good, I see a couple of you guys I can give feedback to. Thanks for turning on your screens. So think of those moments where you're in that flow state and how uh, how much ease is present? Let's go into next circles, forward, right or left, back and opposite side, forward. Let's see, your left, back, your right. Smooth out those circles. So when assessing how often you're in that state of flow, maybe it's just glimpses when you're doing your favorite activity, switch direction. But assess how your biochemistry feels when you're in that state of flow. Our goal here at Flow Shallot is to have predictable and consistent flow state yeah. response during movement practice. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have been to a yoga class. Come back to center. Inhale, lift your chin. You feel that like blissed out feeling after doing a vinyasa flow class, for example. That is your biochemistry shifting into being into parasympathetic nervous system tone for a prolonged period and just getting into that, um, that really content state. Back to center, take your ear to one shoulder, inhale and exhale. Now we know not all yoga classes are created equal. So sometimes we might have a yoga class that gets us in the flow state. And sometimes maybe if we don't understand what's going on, we don't, we're not familiar with the poses, it's really difficult to get into flow state, yeah? Um, if you feel like pinning me as your speaker, that'll keep me on your, on your same um, screen. You can just go to me and just pin me as a speaker if you need to. Um, figure eights. Rotate the chin up towards the ceiling. Chin down, ear down, sweep up. Chin down, ear down, sweep up. So in order to consistently elicit that flow state response, we need to control certain variables. We need to not be in a state of pain. We need to limit the amount of time spent spent in a state of fight or flight. Yeah, come back to center. Inhale, open the chest, arms extend. And we need breath, neutral posture. Exhale, shooting round, ha. So again, that's why we started with just assessing our posture. We wanna be in a state of alertness and, and free of pain and integrating breath. So today I'm super excited to show a sequence of movements which is called flow fit, which is a great way to get into flow state. And um, flow state really occurs when your challenges are just right above your current abilities. Come back to center. Because if it's too easy, we get bored, right? If it's too hard, we get frustrated. So in order to, to uh, concoct that little cocktail of flow state, uh, we need to be right in that sweet spot where our challenge meets our ability. Micro bend your knees, inhale, heart towards the ceiling. On your exhale, heart down towards the floor. Inhale, heart towards the ceiling and exhale. So here we're combining a couple different ranges of motion. So we've got our lateral bend and then combining rotation and extension, all three elements of the spine, exhale. Last one, inhale, center, heart up, exhale down. 
Float your opposite hand down, realign and reestablish, recalibrate neutral posture. Inhale, lengthen, lift up, get tall. Exhale, slide and reach. Find your lateral bend first. So again, finding a bit of complexity, palm facing down, rip the ground apart. Inhale, heart towards the ceiling or the sky. On your exhale, rotate it slightly down. Keep your movements small. Inhale, and sync with your breath. Inhale, on your exhale, rotate down. Two more, inhale, find that rotation and extension. Exhale, rotation and flexion. Last one, inhale, and exhale. And back to center. So I promised you guys five ways, five, everyone loves lists. I promised you guys five little tricks to get you in a flow state. And I'm gonna reiterate these a couple times through practice, hands to uh, thighs, chest expansion. So it's a combination of lifestyle coaching, slide to one side, round, and then understanding the why behind the movement. So my five tips, hopefully you'll memorize these. You don't need to write them down, but you can replay this later on. Write them down after this journal. Switch sides, switch directions. Number one is having a consistent, meaningful movement practice three to four times a week. So my coach, I studied with a flow master for many years um, and was really getting in deep into that research, but he always said, <clears throat> practice or the your um sorry no, i'm gonna quote quote scott sonnen here so scott sonnen the founder of the club was my original flow coach that's uh who developed the sequence that i'm about to teach y'all um, but it's a consistent and regular meaningful movement practice three to four times a week let's come to pelvic tilts tilt it back and tuck it forward so uh random and sporadic training yields random and sporadic results at best that's the quote I don't know if he was the one that says that, but I say that all the time to my students because they're always like, when should I train? When should I move? And I always say, move on the days that you want to feel good. Those are the days that you should move. If you want to, if you want to feel good every day, diagonal hip, hip squats, if you want to feel good every day, find a meaningful movement practice every day. Even if it's just this head to toe joint mobility, waking up all of your movable joints, tuning into parasympathetic nervous system tone. Okay, so we all got number one. It sticks a lot better when we're moving, doesn't it? Uh, so number one, find a meaningful movement practice three to four times a week. Set that up, schedule it in. If you wanna take that a step further, this is 1.A is to follow what's called a four day wave, which elicits a flow response. So this would be considered no and low intensity going through our joint mobility. Find figure eight at the hips. Um, if you come to Flow Shallow, we'll educate you on that stuff. So we do no intensity, low intensity, moderate and high, no, low, mod, high. And that creates the cyclical wave of training. Come back to center, shoulder screws, elevate, rotate, screw down. And unscrew, elevate, rotate, screw down. And unscrew. Add a diagonal squat, inhale to come up. And exhale to come down. Inhale. And exhale. Continue to move with your breath, inhale and exhale. Number two, I have a whiteboard, joint mobility daily. So what we're doing right now is joint mobility. Have this be the first thing for your behavioral change. Shoulder screws, two more on each side. I'm just gonna prop this up so I can see it. Have fun with your movement practice. Laugh a little bit. Don't take yourself so seriously. Those are all part of Number one and two. Shoulder yeah. circles, imagine making a circle with a flashlight on the ground. And then circle up top. So you'll notice everything we do is, it's like a circular pattern. So that's the first layer of complexity. And then a figure eight pattern. So circle on the top, circle on the bottom, circle top, circle bottom. So number one is movement practice, meaningful three to four times a week. Number two, daily joint mobility with breath. Number three is a 10 minute meditation daily to reduce your stress. Number four, flow fit conditioning. Number five, train with ancient tools like the mace, exhibit A. Okay, let's go into hip circles, hands to prayer. Root down with your base leg, level one. Uh, rotation, find hip extension, uh, external rotation, and then internal rotation. If you are still uh, getting your balance down, you can just do these little toe taps. If you have good balance and you're able to do a full hip circle, looks like this, pedal back, find hip extension, rotate, lift up and around an imaginary hurdle, pause. Again, pedal back, rotate, lift, 
and hold. Take three to five in the forward direction, and then three to five in the backward direction, and really aim for getting that glute engagement. Put your mind in your glutes, and really tune into your hip going in full range of motion. You might hear some little clicks and pops, totally normal. Switch directions. Kick back, pull forward. So in our joint mobility sequence here, we're just doing head to toe open chain joint mobility. And our whole goal here is to mobilize our joints, wake up the motor units in the muscle, prime the fascia, switch sides, level one, internal and external. So everything has a purpose. When we're training and, and trying to get into that flow state, we always wanna map out our motor control patterns, first in mobility, and then we'll prime the joints, moving through some loaded work. Let's go into our hip circles. <clears throat> and then a couple key things, and I'll quit yapping about flow state, but hopefully I've given you some things to chew on. You can always research, just research flow state. There's tons of research on it. There's a really great book called Stealing Fire, which is written by two prominent flow researchers, Jamie, I believe it's Jamie Wheel and Stephen Kotler who founded the Flow Genome Project. Come back to center. Figure eights, internal, external, rotation. So the last thing I want you guys to take away about flow state, there'll be a pop quiz later on, guys. Um, switch sides. So when looking at the brain waves, when you're in a state of flow, so when we are in our daily tasks, go ahead and come to center, Tai Chi twist, when we're in our daily tasks, checking email, driving, working, our brain waves can actually be uh, measured and they have a certain hertz that's associated with that daily task activity. It's called a beta brainwave state. So beta brainwave state is highly correlated to anxiety, to stress and depression, but that's where we live a lot of the time. We're in our prefrontal cortex, our front brain, come back to center, you can just massage. Third eye space here, just little circles here, and then crown. So when we're in our front brain, our analytical thinking, our inner critic, if you will, we're losing touch with a very important part of our brain, both fingers here. The upper part of the brain, so we have multiple networks that are activated when we're in a state of flow. So when we're measuring uh, the brain waves in flow state, we have little circles. We have a gamma brainwave state, which is a higher frequency brainwave state, which allows us to do complex tasks with ease. Go ahead and grab some water. I will demo a couple of things for number five, which is train with ancient weapons. You probably don't have a mace at home, but in the event you do, feel free to join into a couple of movements. So this is a mace, which is modern, modeled after an ancient tool called a gada. So my job is to train everyday people to learn how to train like warriors, because there's a true consequence. Now, you don't have to start with swings. Uh, but there's a consequence to using a heavy tool when you're training. So you have to be in this hyper-focused state. And what I found after teaching seminars with loaded tools for about seven years around the world so far, with both clubs and mace, is people get into this sort of like archetype of the warrior when they're training with a mace. It conjures up this, um, this rem remembrance of our ancestors that may have used mace to train or to prepare for battle or to you know, find firewood for, for warmth and things like that. So if you're, if you're curious about mace, just Google steel mace. There's a ton of videos out there. You can check out my YouTube channel as well. Got a lot on there, educating on mace. 35 bucks, best workout tool I've ever seen and really suitable for the day and age that we're in, which is uh, we're in a state of stress and we need to get something that gets us into flow state quickly. So uh, that's a little education on the mace. Let's get into our flow conditioning. Please come back to that power stance. So feet about hip distance apart. See that they're tracking directly under your femurs. So you can take your hands here, the front of the hips. If you were to draw a line straight down so that your knees, your ankles, everything in a line, you can even check out your arches and see if they're collapsed in. If they're collapsed in, push to the outer edges of your feet. Let's take it super slow. The first round is gonna be called slow fit instead of flow fit. 
arms straight ahead, neutral posture, elevate your shoulders up the stress that way, and then pack them down away from your ears until you feel, make a mind muscle connection, until you feel your lats, you can palpate here. So it's that, it's that um, shrugging downward action combined with external rotation. So turn to keys in the ignition, the opposite directions as you depress your shoulders away from your ears and you should feel your lats turn on. Now from here, squeeze your glutes on in such a way that doesn't thrust forward. We don't want really to be living here in the future. Come back to the present stack. So again, elevate, inhale. Exhale through your mouth. Squeeze your glutes on and now activate your core. And extend your arms, all five fingers together. From here, take your hands to your hip crease and then start to tear the ground apart under your feet and tilt your pelvis back. So do as you do. Create a big lumbar curve. Accentuate your lumbar curve first. Place your hands between your um, hip bones and the, the upper quad, and then start to create a little bit of a fold here. We call this a hip hinge. Take your hands to the outsides of your thighs, push out, we call this torque. Now stay in that hip hinge. Notice, did your back come down here? Did you collapse in your thoracic spine? Keep crown to coccyx alignment. Take your arms straight ahead. Rise up and now breathe out of your mouth like this. It's a T sound. Pack your shoulders. Let's try five repetitions of a slow flat footed squat. So from here, shoot your hands forward as you hip hinge, creating that crease. Come down as low as you can go, keeping your body upright. You might be here. Exhale on the way up. Squeeze the glutes. Sink your movement with your breath. Inhale to come down. Option to go all the way down if you have a deep flat footed squat in your practice. Awesome. On your exhale, squeeze the glutes, power breath, pack your shoulders. If you're a little deconditioned, do a power breath in both directions. Looks like this. And if you finish five before I'm done and you want to uh, add a few more, that's totally fine. We're looking for quality of movement and order of operations. First thing that happens, the hips hinge back, arms shoot forward, body stays upright. As you rise up, pack the shoulders. The lats co-contract with the glutes and the core. Get that trifecta firing. And rest, arms by your side. Inhale through the nose. Pause. That suspension of breath is important. And then exhale through the mouth. Bounce a little bit. This is called the chug breath. We do this to get ourselves into parasympathetic in between each and every round of exercises. Inhale deeply through the nose. Pause. That pause triggers parasympathetic and exhale. Next exercise, take your hands straight ahead. See that your hips are in alignment. Make a diamond with your hands. Looks like this. Pull your diamond towards your face. Bend your arms. Pack your shoulders. On your exhale, press your diamonds away, your diamond away, keeping lats engaged. Again, pull the diamond towards your face. Inhale, keep your lats firing. On your exhale, press away, power breath. Good, palm straight ahead. Find your flat-footed squat, meet me here. Hinge forward, make a diamond on the floor. As adjust yourself so your bum's not super high. Drop your knees down just three to four inches hovering above the ground. Now, wrap the eye of the elbow forward, pack your shoulders, and everyone place knees and elbows on the ground, hold. And then see if you can lift your knees and your elbows at the same time with the help of your lats. Press up, inhale down, and exhale up. Level one for quad press, five repetitions. Level one is bringing the knees down each time. Level two, come down, hover, splay the knees like frog, and exhale, press up. Two more, inhale to come down, and exhale to press up. That was five. Push back to your flat-footed squat, arms straight ahead. Come up with control, pack your shoulders, squeeze your glutes on. Arms by your side, inhale through the nose. And exhale, chug it out. Inhale deeply. And exhale. So there's something really important happening as you start to condition. You're gonna start seeing the pattern, but you're starting to metabolize the stress response. So arms straight ahead. Hip hinge, come down, hinge forward. From here, perform a loaded beast. So sit your bum back towards your heels. Decrease any lighter airspace between your calves and the backs of your thighs. 
fold. You can rest. And then again, level one, just loading the beast, sitting back and rest. Corkscrew the eye of the elbow forward. Level two, load the beast. So push the hips back towards the heels. Rotate your knees to the left. Do as I do. Level one, level two, lift a hand. Come back to center. Swivel, opposite side. So see that the left hip lines up right in front of, right behind the wrist. Option to pull the hand up. Swivel, center, lift the hand, power breath. Swivel, so you can do this both hands on the ground. If you have any things going on with your low back and this feels like too much, just work on that loaded beast, just working on torque in the arms, creating that external rotation. Eventually, pull a hand up. Next progression, pull a hand up, thread a leg through, here. Now you might be looking at me going, how the heck am I gonna do that with ease? It takes time, it takes practice and consistency. Again, that three to four times a week of meaningful functional movement patterning. Come back to center, come back to your flat foot squat, rise up, inhale through the nose, pause, exhale through the mouth, inhale through the nose, and exhale. So I'm taking you through a sequence of seven exercises in succession. Five reps of everything. And we'll do it again. Four, three, and then two, one. By the end of it, you're going to be in a state of flow. But for now, just learn, absorb, and decide which level is appropriate for you. Okay, next progression. Arms straight ahead. This is a really great one for if you come to yoga class. This helps you with your step throughs. Find a flat-footed squat. Plant the palms. Listen carefully. Right foot forward, left foot back. Here, hold. This is called mountain climber. Mountain climber to spinal twist. Shift your left hip so your left hip rotates down. Place it on the floor. Come around to seated spinal twist. Inhale. Now unwind, find that rotation, land back in mountain climber. Mountain climber switch. So you can either step back or jump back like I just did. Right hip swivels down towards the floor. Don't worry if you don't get it right the first time. It's totally fine. Seated spinal twist. And come back around. Mountain climbers switch. Now this time when you switch, see if you can keep your hips and shoulders in a line. So avoid bucking bronco and instead switch. Left hip goes down, seated spinal twist, inhale. Good, unwind, mountain climber, find that hollow body position. Mountain climber, switch. Right hip goes down. Inhale. And unwind, mountain climber, switch. Right hip goes, right leg forward, opposite hip goes down. Play with those movement patterns. If you need to modify, you can just work on modified switches. Mountain climbers, totally fine too. Do what works best for you. Inhale. Notice if your wrists are starting to talk to you, spread your fingers wide like starfish. Last one, push down through other parts of your fingers as well. Of course, my little mic is going to get lost here. Come back to your mountain climber, right foot forward. And then left foot forward, push back to your flat footed squat and rise up. Chugging breath, inhale through the nose and exhale. Inhale, so just challenging yourself to go into that calm state in between every single round. Moving into our tripods. Arms straight ahead. Notice you enter everything from that perfect flat-footed squat. Actually promotes longevity by about seven years. If you can access a full deep flat-footed squat, great for injury prevention as well. Take your right hand back, have a seat, or just get to the ground however you'd like. However feels safe to you. Level one for a tripod. Take your right hand behind your right hip, left elbow in towards the ribcage, and then rotate around and orbit and switch arms. Level one, quick switch, rotate, elbow placed. Notice as you anchor your back arm, your thoracic spine is coming into a little bit of rotation and you're opening up the frontline fascia on the front of your shoulders. Switch and switch. Stick with level one if you'd like, just working on opening the fascia. Level two, a partial lift, hovering the glutes above the ground. Level three, partial to big lift, stack the shoulders, look up, rotate your chin towards the shoulder, come down and switch. 
So from behind, you're gonna see this perfectly straight line. I'm not here, but I'm stacked. Continue five repetitions each side, power breaths. Looking for that glute engagement, full hip activation, stacking the shoulder directly over the wrist. And here's the fun part, last one. Let's go left arm back, right arm reaches. Come down, All right, here's the fun part. Lift your glutes, left hand is anchored. Take your right hand to your shoulder. Rotate around the block. So again, from here, rotate, lift, and rise up. Chugging breath, inhale through the nose, and exhale, inhale. Notice the heat building in the body. Notice the mental chatter. Stay with me, scale it down if you need to. You can do less reps if you need to. You can do a force level breath, breathing out in both directions. Two more exercises and we'll go into our next round. There'll be lots of Q&A after. I'm excited to answer all your questions. Here we go, squat, plant palms, step, step. Inhale, athletic upward facing dog. So hip feet stay tucked under like this. Exhale, pike downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, bend the knees. You can step, step, or jump the feet to the outsides of the hands. Drop your hips. This is a real hip opener here. Drop them as low as you can go. Might be up here. Reach right forehand, left hand forward. Rise up. Arms straight ahead. See that the wrists are in line with the shoulders. Feel free to turn your screens on if you want some coaching. Squat. Plant. Step, step. Plank. Inhale, athletic upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. If up dog bothers you, just go from the plank to the down dog. Jump or step nice and wide, drop your glutes. Think of this as like malasana and yoga. Arms straight ahead and rise up. Three more, squat, plant, step, step or jump to plank. Inhale, upward facing, exhale, downward facing. Step, step or jump. Arms straight ahead, two more. Squat, plant and stabilize, torque in the arms, micro bend the elbows, step, step, or jump. Inhale, upward facing, glutes on. Exhale, downward facing. Last one, power breath. Inhale, and exhale. Rise up, chugging breath, inhale. Pause at the top, triggering parasympathetic, and exhale. Awesome work so far. Final exercise, spinal rock. Find your squat. Take a hand back. This is the one where I'm really going to lose my microphone here. Okay, so do as I do. Grab the knees. Pull the chest through, so broadening across the breastbone to eliminate our stress response. We're alert. Our eyes are on the horizon. From here, uh, hollow the belly, so pelvic tilts back. Let your low back connect to the floor. Level one, if you have any back issues, just lying toe taps, driving your, el uh, your elbows into the floor is a really great starting place with the lowest impact. So this is a level one here. If you feel comfortable doing a rollback, come up to the seated position, hands to the front of the knees, inhale. On your exhale, release your pelvis, round your lower back to the floor, elbows drive into the floor, roll like a ball. Unwind, inhale, pull up. Feet nice and wide here. So hands to the knees to start. I see a couple of you guys turning your screen on. Roll back, elbows drive into the ground. See if you can get concave, lift your hips, drop your knees towards your chest to come out of it. This will allow you to avoid the clunk clunk of the lower back. So try it again, three more times. Exhale, inhale. Notice as I go back, I'm doing this moment of I'm lifting my hips and pointing my toes that way. So try that out when you're moving towards level two, level three, eventually you're coming to a shoulder stand dropping knees to chest and rolling out and level four, coming up to a partial squat in between with feet nice and wide. So you can come to that partial, you can use fist for wrist to get out of it and chug it out. Inhale and exhale. Quick one word check in, type it in in the chat bar uh, so I can see what that first round was for you. It's the essence of that first round. 
Interpersonal sharing or just putting a word to the flow is another way to help facilitate that flow, stands, flow state for you. Take a little water if you need to and just type in your one word check-in. So I'll wait for everyone. We'll get started on our next round. This is also a time where I give you guys to rest <laughs> because I know when it's your first time doing flow fit, it's a lot harder than it looks. So I wanna give you guys adequate time so you can go into your next round feeling amazing. Cool. Um, so just a one word check in with the essence of that first round. Was it challenging? Was there flow? Somebody said clear, challenged, awesome. And we'll check in with each round and as we progress, you're gonna see it gets easier and easier because you know what to expect. So in the three stages of facilitating a flow state response, that was the learning round. The next round is the practice round and then performance and then flow. I really geek out on this stuff because flow state's my favorite thing to teach. Playful, stretchy, engaging, uh, rooted, challenged. Like, where's my camera? Are you, you guys are up here, the camera's down here. So I'm looking all over the place. Tight, stretchy. So just know there is progress in your practice if you're patient and consistent and you're training with a purpose and you're training understanding how your body works. It's, it's a lot easier to cultivate a deep intrinsic motivation when you understand the why behind it. Okay, so that first round was super slow. Let's go into our, our round of three. So three repetitions of everything. Remember the breath. So please start with your mountain stance. Place your pelvis in neutral and imprint that neutral stance every time. Take your arms straight ahead, pack your shoulders and feel your triceps coming online. So you should feel a little muscle tone is here. Scapula drawing down actively away from your ears, turning your keys in their, in their sockets. Shoot your hands forward, shoot your hips back, create that hinge, flat-footed squat, three reps. You can do it, exhale up. Inhale to come down, force the breath in, exhale, power breath. Good, one more, inhale. Crown to coccyx alignment, exhale, squeeze the glutes, pack the shoulders. Come down to your flat-footed squat, make a diamond with your hands. We're taking out that rest time this time. Pull your knees and arms down to the floor, hover and hold. Sit your butt back, press up, power breath. Three reps. Level one, knees and elbows touch. Press up at the same time for two. Again, knees and elbows touch level one or just hover level two. Push back to your deep flat-footed squat, arms straight ahead, crown to coccyx alignment, rise up. Squat, plant palms, loaded beast, sit the butt back towards the heels, swivel knees to one side, option to lift the hand, look down at your hands, center, switch. Elbow to rip. Think about recoiling your oblique switch. Right hand lifts. And swivel, hips to the opposite side. Left hand lifts. One more on each side. Swivel, hip down behind wrist. Opposite side, swivel. And come back to center. Flat-footed squat. Rise up. Squat. Plant palms. Right leg forward, left leg back. Hip comes down. Seated spinal twist. Inhale. And exhale, challenge yourself just slightly out of your comfort zone. Notice what happens when inner chatter says, this is hard or I'm not flexible enough. Mountain climber switch. Replace that thought, that inner critic thought with empowering self-talk. So how do you want to feel? How do you imagine you'll feel after you learn the alignment and you start to cultivate that sense of flow and control over your own outcomes? Mountain climber switch. Opposite hip comes down, seated spinal twist. Step the right foot forward, squat, rise up, squat. Right hand back, anchor, find the tripod, level one. Rotate, option for partial lift, rotate, anchor. Level two is full hip lift, power breath. Exhale, and exhale. Swing it around the block, rise up. Squat, plant, step, step, hollow body plank. Inhale, upward facing, and exhale, downward facing. Jump the feet or step the feet nice and wide. Arms straight ahead, rise up. Squat, plant, step, step, or jump. Inhale, up dog, and exhale, down dog. Jump it wide, and rise up. Squat, plant, inhale, and exhale. Jump, squat, and rise. Spinal rock, roll it back. 
Inhale, grab the knees. Level one is the toe taps. Exhale, feet nice and wide. Work on articulating your lower back down. Last one. Using fist for wrist or reach straight ahead. And one minute recovery. Type your one word check in in the chat bar and I'll read them off. Inhale, take a little water and exhale. I see lots of women in the room today. Super awesome. Sweaty, <laughs> fast. I'll slow it down a little bit. Powerful. Yeah, Becky. Woohoo. Elizabeth, how are you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. Cool. Okay. The final two rounds, we get one of everything. We'll take a little chug breath in between and then we'll cool it down with some closed chain mobility. Geek out a little bit more on flow state. You guys up for the challenge? Yes, I see smiles. That is good. I see a couple of smiles. Serotonin levels are up. Dopamine is happening. Here we go. Two rounds of flow fit. Arms straight ahead. Single reps of everything. Flat footed squat. Come down to your lowest depth. Feel your body powerful as you pack your shoulders, squeeze your glutes. Find your flat footed squat, inhale. Hinge the body forward, corkscrew the eye of the elbow in, lower down, hover and hold, or knees and elbows touch, and then press up, one quad press. Press back to your flat foot squat, rise up, squat, plant, hinge, loaded beast, level one, level two, swivel, option to lift a hand, swivel, op option to lift the other hand, push back to flat footed squat, and rise up, squat, plant, Right leg forward, left leg back, mountain climber position. Left hip goes down, seated spinal twist. Hug the knee, feel the piriformis stretch. Unwind, mountain climber switch. Left foot forward, right hip goes down. Seated spinal twist and unwind. Come back to that flat footed squat, rise up. Flat foot squat, plant palms, reach right hand back. Tripod, loaded or full tripod and switch. One on each side. See if you can swing around the block. Come on up, squat, plant, press palms to the earth. Inhale, upward facing and exhale, downward facing. Jump the feet forward nice and wide. Arms straight ahead, squat. Squat to spinal rock. Use your fist for wrist or plant the feet, rise up. Chugging breath, inhale and exhale. Feel the heat in your body. Feel your body digesting that cortisol, adrenaline, the stress response. You're metabolizing that back into your system. So good for you. Final round, here we go. Squat, exhale, squat. Quad press, one rep, down and up. Push back, rise up. Squat to base switch, swivel, switch. Center, if it feels like I'm going fast, that's okay, stay with me, do your best. Challenge yourself just right out of your comfort zone. Right leg forward, left leg back, seated spinal twist. See if you can find the in-breath. Switch. Find your flat foot squat, rise up. Squat, tripod, right hand back, full tripod or partial, your choice. Swing it around, rise up. Flat foot squat, upward facing, inhale. Exhale, downward facing. Jump it wide. Find your squat. Spinal rock. Inhale. Chugging breath. Inhale through the nose. And exhale. Inhale deeply. And exhale. Take your pulse just for a moment. You can count for 15 seconds, starting now. And stop. All right, to conclude your accountability piece for this workout, type the number that you got when you did a 15 second count. So for me, I got 35. And then your final one word check-in in in the chat bar. 37 says James, awesome. So your one word check-in and the number. So qualitative and objective. So it's the final essence of that last flow. Were you able to get into a state of flow? Did action and awareness merge? Were you present? Were you grounded? You were speedy, lighter, 
Great. And let's take it into our cool down. <clears throat> so as we're going into cool down, I'm gonna teach you guys a couple exercises, movements, mobility drills, call them movement snacks that are drastically <laughs> going to decrease your thoracic discomfort. So I know a lot of folks have really bound fascia in the upper mid back. Do this daily and I promise you, you're gonna feel amazing. Okay, so take a knee. Let's go left leg forward so you're mirroring me. And you guys can just face me if you'd like. So again, going back to those three different uh, kinesiology based movements of the spine. We'll start with the lateral bending piece. So inhale, arms up, grab the wrist, torque in the front leg. So external rotation, traction up first. So pull your outside right hand up, inhale. On your exhale, take a lateral bend towards your bent leg. So it'll be towards your left and come back to center. So we'll do a couple things. Let's just see what it feels like when, when the cueing is simply in our lats and in our spine. Generally, we're feeling it mostly here in the side body. Now take your hands to your pelvis, tilt back and tuck forward a couple times. Tilt back, tuck forward. Tilt and tuck. And then what would happen if you kept a neutral pelvis and then slid your hips closer to your heels? Feel the hip flexor stretch. So play with that piece, we call it a surge forward. I'm gonna face you guys so you have something to go from here. So arms up. Start with lateral bend, level one, back to center. Take left arm forward, so mirror me, so your left leg, hopefully, yes. S reach up and spiral up and you're holding a plate here. Find your lateral bend first. And then second, rotate your spine until it hits its like stopping point. If you lose your balance, torque in the legs, pelvic floor engaged. And now last piece, surge your hips a little more forward and feel how that it, it impacts your hip, hip flexor. Come back to center. So you can do two of those pieces or all three. We've got lateral bend, hold, rotation of the thoracic upper mid back. Lastly, the hip sinking forward, and then third or fourth, arc your spine, and it might come into a full circle. And then back to center. Take pieces of that, combine the whole thing. Let's do two more times, whichever levels you'd like. Lateral bend, rotation. Once we hit our stopping point, surge the hips forward. And then option to lift your upper chest like you're dumping a pail of water behind you. And that's that last little gooey spot. It's gonna feel so good. Okay, I think that was, I think we have one more. Go to your edge. So it's knocking at the, at the edge of discomfort, like knocking at the door without barging through it. Switch sides, take a knee. I like to see the hips or uh, feet, knees feet or hips distance apart instead of like a tightrope. This is really wobbly. Go here, arms up, grab the wrist, tease it out. Just playing with that repetition in the bending and trying to bring elasticity into the fascia. The fascia is on the outside of the muscle by doing multiple repetitions. We call this mobility versus a static stretch. There's more um, exposure to the stimulus, more heat. Next progression, show me your trays. Lateral bend, rotation. You might be here, maybe you're surging your hip forward. Maybe not. Realign, aim for four to five reps. Lateral bend, rotation. Sink the hips forward, breathe. I like to think of throwing a bucket of water. So everyone has a bucket of water this time of year. Throwing the water backwards and switch sides. So that was the hard one. This is the easier one. Switch legs, left leg forward, feet hip distance, pelvis neutral, call upon pelvic floor muscles, arms up. So when you bend this way towards the bent leg, it's, and you rotate, there's a little restriction. What would happen if we switch the arm placement? So explore, inquire in your own fascia, right arm forward, laterally bend, rotate, you can go a heck of a lot more because you don't have that leg there, and then sink your hips forward. Lean your upper body back and realign. Very nice. Again, find that lateral bend, find your rotation, 
Option to sink the hips forward, option to lift the heart. Maybe dumping the water all the way back. Maybe Anjay Asana, the kneeling lunge. In the center, one more time. <clears throat> Take your time releasing those hip flexors. We did a lot of squats, a lot of mountain climbers. And now place the hands on the inside of the foot, squeeze the knee against the arm, and drop your knee to the outside if you'd like. Getting a little deeper into hip stretches. Call this lizard pose. It's a little wiggly, a little mobility. Take it back to child's pose. Hips to heels, stretching low back, ha, forehead touching the earth. And lift and step opposite leg forward. Let's go arms up. This is the arm we want in front. So your left arm is forward, laterally bent, away from the bent leg. Rotate, sink the hips forward, feel the hip flexor stretch. Try this out daily, just five reps on either, in either direction, realign. So this time, notice where your breath starts to hold. Realign, inhale, exhale, inhale, rotate. Where does the breath want to stop and get kind of stuck? And can you be there a little bit longer with a little more gentleness, a little more ease? One more time. Laterally bend, rotate, lift heart. Maybe taking it all the way around to Andreasana. And then float the hands to the instep. Pack your shoulders, drop the left knee open, find your wiggles in your lizard pose. And be thinking about what other questions you have about flow state, the practices. And just to recap, come to child's pose, our five tips, five lifestyle practices that you can put into effect right now. Today is your first workout. Uh, bring your left knee forward behind left wrist, pigeon pose. So number one, the exercise goes a bit further. So number one is find a meaningful movement practice three to four times a week. And then to expand upon that, instead of just having an objective goal, like I ought to be training three to four times a week because my doctor says, I want you to think about why you really want to do that and why, like how you imagine you'll feel differently when you do. So what is the desired feeling that comes along with that? Because we're not really after the three to four times a week, we're after the feeling that you feel right now of empowered, of digesting the stress response, of tuning into your body, your inner vessel. Take the leg across. This is a fun one. So uh, make your legs like an L, swivel your back hip over. I'm gonna demonstrate this to the side. So make an L, uh, left leg is across, back leg is straight. Roll your hip over like this. Level one, level two, forearms come to the ground. Level three, thread the arm under. Hold yourself in a pretzel position. If your pretzel only wants to come to here, listen to your pretzel. Be a small pretzel. If you want to be a tight pretzel, that's cool too, but take your time progressively deepen your pretzel. All right, my peanut gallery jokes. Pretty bad. I'm glad you guys are silent. Switch sides. So we've got number one, movement practice. How do we want to feel differently? What are the feelings that accompany that movement practice of three to four times a week? Daily joint mobility. When in doubt, do 10 minutes of joint mobility, head to toe, wrist uh, circles, elbow circles, shoulder circles, neck slides. Uh, if, you're, if you're curious, go to Summer Huntington on YouTube and type in into flow, I-N-T-U, flow. And I've got a bunch of sequences there to open chain joint mobility. Or come see us at the Flow Shala and you'll get lots of resources for that. Dying Warrior, take the leg across. So number two, why do we want to mobilize our joints? Well, if we're feeling tight and restricted and we're feeling pain and we're feeling inflammation and our posture is starting to be highly impacted, how do we imagine we'll feel differently when we've implemented a daily joint mobility practice? And start small, Let's start achievable. If you can do two times a week, that's a win. It's a good start. Today counts as your first one. And number three, 10 minutes of meditation using four, seven, eight breath. And on that note, we'll learn that. Come to a seated position, cross-legged, hands resting on your knees, close the eyes. Four, seven, eight breath. It's four count in, seven count pause, and an eight count exhalation. Go ahead, inhale. Pause, suspend the breath and hold for seven, six, five, four. Keep on holding, three, two, and exhale for eight, seven, six, five, 
four, three, two, one. Begin again, inhale for four. Pause when you reach the top and hold, suspend the breath. And a seven count, hold, and then an eight count, exhale. Try one more time on your own, inhale. Pause and hold. And a long exhale. And I'll list off the last couple. Number four was daily flow fit conditioning. So training with a purpose, eliciting that flow state response, pushing your edge just slightly out of your comfort zone and learning functional movement patterns. That's number four. Number five, getting yourself a steel mace, checking out Hey, Summer, I think we lost you. Sorry, Summer. 